three weeks ago we started a series called the anointing where I preached how the anointing comes by association but it grows by desperation last service I've shared a little bit about the inner anointing how the inner anointing grows within us to develop our character and this morning I want to touch on the outer anointing if you have your Bible in Genesis chapter 20 verse 7 we will continue the story of Abraham it says the following now therefore restore the man's wife for he is a prophet and he will pray for you and you shall live if you do not restore her know that you will surely die you and all that are yours this is the story where God showed up to Abimelech and we probably see that for the first time God communicates to a king in a dream we believe that God still till this day gives people dreams but not only God is the one that gives dreams Satan also assaults people in the dreams I want you to see something in this story and many other stories God instructed unbelievers in the dream which tells us if God can instruct the heathens Satan can attack the Christians being attacked in the dream is not a sign you belong to Satan just like being instructed in a dream doesn't doesn't mean you belong to God Pharaoh got instructions from God in a dream King, kings of Babylon got instructions from God in a dream. Abimelech had instruction from God in a dream. It didn't mean they had a relationship with him. It just simply means God loves people enough to speak to them. And if Satan attacks you in a dream, it does not mean you belong to him. Actually, it means you don't belong to him because Satan doesn't attack people on his team. If Satan is after you, that means he doesn't have you. I believe God owns the night even if Satan assaults us in the dream or attacks us in the dream you have to understand one thing Satan can attack you in the dream Delilah while Samson slept cut his hair the Bible says in Matthew chapter 13 as they slept the enemy sowed tears many times as we sleep the enemy comes in to sow tears in our dreams you wake up you confuse you wake up you're emotionally disturbed you wake up it kind of messes with you and you have to do this anything you agree with every nightmare you agree with you empower when you wake up in the morning and you had a nightmare whether it was a sex in a dream you were flying or somebody was shooting you you were falling or something was bad happening when you wake up in the morning you have to simply disagree with it and you disable it amen. disagreement disables the nightmare can somebody say amen can somebody say amen say I disagree see I disagree with every nightmare and I agree with God's dream for my life many people they wake up in the morning and they agree with that it wasn't the nightmare that will destroy you it was your agreement with the nightmare that will destroy you see many times if you apply for a credit card you apply for an, uh, for any account online the, uh, you have to read the terms you know it's like 27 million pages that nobody reads and then at the end you have to click agree if you don't click agree you can't go to the next page see Satan throws you all of these nightmares and you have to simply say I don't have time to read this I simply disagree he can't go to the next page because you disabled him by disagreeing with him every time you agree with, with a nightmare in the morning you empower the nightmare and it's not the nightmare that will affect your day it was your agreement with it we see in here God speaks to a king and he God in the, in the dream he tells him I want you to call my man prophet Abraham so the first prophet in the Bible now we little quiz is Abraham Abraham was the first prophet in the Bible and God calls Abimelech to ask Abraham to pray for his women now little background story he took Sarah and because of that the women became barren in his court and God says return the return to Sarah and then Abraham will pray for your women there's only one problem Abraham lied to Abimelech Abraham doesn't have a good character and Abimelech comes to Abraham after returning Sarah and this is my own version of it he says you lied to me you're a liar but I want you to come and pray for healing in my house imagine somebody who duped you online and you're inviting him to pray for your house 
that is just weird that is just wrong that is just not right and I'm pretty sure Abraham replied back to Abimelech and says I'm sorry Abimelech I would love to pray for you but not today you caught me lying I don't feel like praying for people today and, and by the way if God I'm gonna pray for anybody who is sick it's gonna be my wife and if my wife isn't healed nobody gonna get healed so I'm not praying for you I don't have the courage I don't have the integrity to pray for healing right now healing ministry is over and I'm pretty sure Abimelech says you know what yeah you're a liar you shouldn't be praying for healing but God in the dream said you are a prophet I want you to remember this anointing flows through your identity not your character anytime you flow through your character you can't heal people anytime you look at your character you will find so much flaws and Satan will use your character to stop you from flowing in the anointing people who flow in healing in deliverance people who God uses to make an impact on others they don't do so because they are perfect in the eyes of people they don't do so because they feel worthy they do so because they base their identity on what God says about them and we see in here a contradiction between what Abraham was doing and what God was saying Abraham was lying and God was saying he is a prophet that means sometimes your condition and your position conflict and God stands on your position and because of your position God says I want you to heal people you say but God I don't feel like healing people I'm still struggling with this and that and that and God says you are a prophet you're like Lord I'm a pathetic prophet God says nevertheless you are a prophet if you want to minister healing to people you have to understand before you pray for others and minister to others Satan will bring up your character your inconsistency your Bible that has not been picked up your fasting that you didn't finish and you broke before Wednesday with pizza instead of finishing after service Satan will bring the fact you spend too much time on internet he will bring the fact that listen your pictures on Instagram do not reflect the modesty of Jesus Christ he will bring every single thing to remind you you can't be ministering to people look at you and if you don't know this you will think yes I'm not perfect I'm not good enough and you won't minister to people with and you will live saying once I get better once I change then I'll heal then I'll pray for the sick then I'll, I'll invite people to church not knowing you are in a trap of the devil every person who ministers by God isn't better than you the only difference between them and you is they don't look at their character when they minister they look at Jesus when they minister because it is in Jesus name we minister healing not in our character's name can somebody say amen come on can somebody say amen now we shouldn't ignore our character don't get me wrong but our character is distraction when it comes to ministry many times even when I minister you know when we minister here or when I go preaching if I look at, the, at myself I will disqualify myself from every dream God has given me but if I look at my identity in Christ I'm qualified in Jesus name Amen. we always get up and say things like we're not perfect that's a devil's lie in Christ you are perfect and through Christ you're being perfected get rid of that stinking thinking you can you will never minister healing until you get rid of the stinking thinking God calls you a prophet even if you feel like you're a liar God calls you a man of God God calls you a woman of God you may say Lord but there is a contradiction well that's going to be the grace of God that's going to deal with the contradiction but right now you are who God says you are and that's exactly the first healing happened in the Bible happened through a man who was caught in a lie but God called him a prophet and Abraham was brave enough to believe what God says not what he did just a few days ago he had enough faith to believe what God declared about him instead of what he felt about himself there will be times when God presents an opportunity for you to minister to somebody you're gonna feel like Abraham you're gonna feel pathetic when God calls you prophetic and you're gonna have to stand on what God says because see when God says let there be light darkness changes into a light and you say God but you say I am this I don't feel like that God says see when I say things I don't always say things as they are I sometimes say things as they're gonna be if you believe in them anointing flows through identity somebody say identity say I know who I am
say I am righteous say I am forgiven say I am saved say I'm a child of God say I have a prophetic flowing through me say these hands come on raise your hands say these hands they're meant to heal say this mouth is gonna prophesy say this mouth will declare and decree the dry bones will live some of you are like dry bones you're speaking so quiet say this mouth will declare that every dry bone will live will live will live come on if you believe it put your hands together for Jesus Christ you know I'll rather be a wet water walker than a dry boat talker if you ever want to walk on water you don't have to wait till you get perfect you just have to accept that you are perfect in Christ and you are being perfected through Christ Abraham ministered healing and God healed people not because Abraham was conditionally perfect but because positionally he was a prophet this scripture encourages me so much and it should encourage each one of you nobody in here will ever be living up to that place where God calls you but operate out of the place of God calling you and you will see miraculous it doesn't take character to operate in miracles that's why many people who operate in miracles don't have character and we say well that's a negative thing actually no it just means your miraculous doesn't depend on your character every person who gets up and says things like well once we get our life cleaned up then God's gonna move to us you have no idea what you're talking about God doesn't move because your life is clean God moves because his son is clean that's why it says in Jesus name we heal the sick in his name even the people who Jesus says I don't know you and they say we cast out demons we heal people in your name healing miracles and manifestation of the glory of God never happens through you if it happens through you it's no longer through him that's why it doesn't take character to manifest the power of God don't wait for your character to change for you to allow the Holy Ghost to flow through you your character is growing it's changing and it's going to continue changing until you see Jesus Christ but that should never 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 make you stop allowing the grace to flow through you to impact other people's lives can somebody say amen? amen point number two anointing it flows by obedience but it can get quenched by offense Abraham if I would be Abraham the first reason I wouldn't pray for the sick is that I just got caught in a lie and some of you heard my story when I stole a bicycle in the first year of our being in America and I never told you but my the who taught me to steal was my late grandpa <laughs> it wasn't stealing he just said that people bring things to goodwill and immigrants should take it <laughs> he's with the Lord so I'm pretty sure he's gonna forgive this uh, that I'm that I'm gonna tarnish his reputation just for one second but we would go on Saturday nights load in the truck and drive by goodwill and just see whatever is there and just put it on the truck so my I just because my grandpa peer pressure he did that so I just went with it and one day I decided to go hunting for the blessing of God on my life 13 years of age just came to America didn't speak any English it was on Saturday in the morning I made my way to the Goodwill and as I was there I saw this beautiful bicycle I took that bicycle because you know if it's there it's yours I believe this name it claim it blab it grab it possess it confess it before it was popular and as I took the bicycle next thing the police came in and they brought me to the Goodwill I didn't speak English so they had to use a translator to explain everything now remember this is Saturday so I apologize I didn't never I never turned my grandpa in because I didn't want him to suffer for the crimes he's committed against this country <laughs> I just said it was all my doing and ever since then I've never I never stole again there's only one problem with that the girl who was translating her family was coming next day to our church and I was scheduled to preach 13 years 13 and a half years of age and I the pastor lived next to us so I told the pastor I got caught I am a thief please excuse me from preaching preach the message on stealing and I'll come to the front publicly repent and then you know two months later put me back in the pulpit pastor said no you're gonna preach and I said that family that translated me is coming how can I stand and preach there and this is where pastor taught me he says well you should have thought about that before you took the bike 
you're either gonna steal or preach but you can't do both together and that day I learned I know it's a, some of you will get offended what I'm about to say it's not really what you do that qualifies you for ministry it is your identity and yes I've never stole ever since but I've learned how to minister when my character is not what it's where it's supposed to be if I would have waited until my character gets so good that I become so self-righteous and so, so judgmental and that I become so perfect honestly the day would never come and many people would have been lost anointing operates through your identity not through your character Amen. anointing operates through my obedience not through offense see one of the reasons why I believe Abraham did not want to pray for Abimelech's wives is the very thing he needed to exercise his faith for others he himself didn't have his wife's been barren for years and Abimelech is saying pray for my wife to be healed what, what problem does your wife has fever maybe no she doesn't have fever uh, maybe a little neck pain no she has barrenness and Abraham says no 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 I have an experience breakthrough in my own family from this I can't pray for barrenness for healing because if I would have the anointing for that I would experience it in my own house yeah. and Abimelech says well the problem is that God told you to pray and this is a good moment to get offended at God you're like didn't you ask him why he didn't heal my wife yet first God is asking him to pray for someone in the very area he himself does not have a breakthrough in I want to let you know that if you ever want to operate in the anointing consistently you have to learn to minister to other people when things in your life still are on delay when there's still even pain maybe in your own body maybe there's a still financial situation maybe you're still working things out and many people who simply say you can't go around saving people if your own family members aren't saved that's a hypocrisy actually that's faith because the family of Jesus came to Jesus and said Jesus you're crazy Jesus what do you think you're doing and Jesus didn't stop ministering and saying hey how come I'm going saving the world and I can't save my family he just flipped the switch and he says you know who my family is everyone he literally switched it he did not want the devil to corner him and to say oh look your own family isn't serving you why you're there saving the whole world Jesus ignored that continued to save the world and then his brother became the pastor and then his mom got baptized in the Holy Spirit God changed his family but he didn't wait for his family to change until he touches the world you know Smith Vigglesworth person that we all love who raised the dead and healed the sick and everything most people don't know but his daughter Alice was deaf all her life he had kidney stones for six years one of his children died at a very very young age and he couldn't raise him from the dead he raised other people from the dead but he couldn't do that and people made fun of him and they say why is your own daughter sitting with ear earphone all kinds of uh, hearing aids right in front why she has you have glasses why does you have kidney stones and you have to leave during the sermon because of blood coming out through your pants why you have to do that when you minister to other people but he didn't minister to other people because Smith Wigglesworth was the healer he was obedient to the healer that's that's why he healed other people the person who brought the Pentecostal movement to America in 1900 William Seymour when he went to Kansas City and he heard the message the Holy Spirit baptizes people with evidence of speaking in tongues he got so fired up he came to Los Angeles he came so excited he came to this one church and said guys I have a word from God God baptizes people today he get up to preach and he start speaking about tongues they asked him do you speak in tongues he said no they kicked him out of the church they said you are preaching something you don't have he says I don't have it here but I have it here they said that's not enough and they kicked him out he went to a janitor's house started to meet in the house and say guys I don't have it but the Bible says it and I'm gonna preach it he didn't preach him he preached the word people start getting baptized in the Holy Spirit he still didn't have it until one day he received that and I'm thankful to God he didn't wait for the logic see many times we allow logic to stop the anointing of simply saying if I don't have it in my family I can't give it to other people you're not the source you're the channel and if you're connected to the source you can give anything you don't have because it comes from the source that's why when Elisha asked Elijah for double portion Elijah said I don't have it but if you watch because I'm connected to the source I'll give you what I don't have because it comes from the source 
you will always be able to give to people what you don't have if you're connected to the source don't look at your circumstances you don't have to go pray for the sick because you're healthy you praying for the sick because there's a promise by his stripes they will be healed I had this personal experience about a few months ago when I went to Missouri as I went to minister the moment I arrived in the conference I landed in the airport and I got sick I got sick with fever and it wasn't a normal fever because usually you know I pray and spray I pray and then I spray if prayer didn't work spray works if spray didn't work I just take a pill and I did all three and nothing happened I still was sick I started to shake I preached the first service it was great preached the second service it was okay and evening service came and I got so sick I got so sick that I, my body was just vibrating shaking and it wasn't the power of God it was the power of fever and that evening I was supposed to pray for the sick and I remember I went into the room by the sanctuary to pray just, just 10 minutes before the service as I'm praying and the devil just literally came into the room and said Vlad do everything but don't pray for the sick because people already know you are sick how can you pray for the sick if you are sick yourself and as I'm standing there pacing debating whether I'm gonna pray for the sick or not I remembered when I was in Ukraine and a guy that I saw God using mightily to heal the sick I saw people around me they were used to be to heal to, to sick to be healed and everything and then I found out six months later that he himself before he came on a conference every service because services lasted 30 days they injected all kinds of medicine into his spine because of his pain and God healed people through him when he was sick so I was there in the room and that story came to my mind and this story came to my mind and right there in that room I said devil I said I'm gonna pray for the sick just to offend you just to make you look bad that's it and God is gonna kill people today not because I'm healthy but because Jesus Christ paid for every one of their diseases that's it I remember I got up there over 20 people came up with healing testimonies some healing testimonies I was crying amazing healing testimonies I didn't get healed and I preached one more service still sick the moment the conference was over and they dropped me off at the airport the fewer left I don't know I can't explain it but one thing I've learned I don't minister out of my experience right now I minister out of the promise of God in his word you want to operate in healing remember Satan will use your situation to tell you to stop and God will use his promise to tell you continue can somebody say amen I want you to write down number three anointing operates through risk but fear makes you lazy a man who had one talent he hid his talent and he said because I was afraid and God the king looked at him and he said do you know real reason why you hid that talent because you're lazy and I believe something the Lord revealed to me personally when I am afraid I become lazy when you are scared you develop a critical spirit when you operate in faith you will operate in a creative edge people who are scared and who don't take risks for God they will constantly operate in a critical lazy spirit when you get scared first and you say I don't want to take risks Abraham could have easily said I can't pray for the sick why what if they don't get healed I don't I can't pray for the sick because this and this and that many times people say I can't go power evangelizing why because I'm afraid if I get rejected I can't go call out words of knowledge why maybe I never heard it from God maybe it was just something I heard on my own if I go lay hands on the sick and nothing happens you know I'm gonna look bad and so what we do is because of fear we shy away every time you live in fear you will live in laziness and you will develop a critical spirit instead of creative edge the first time we had to give a car away I thought it was the devil that was speaking to me the second time we had to give a car away I was like this is insane this is crazy nothing you will ever attempt for God will come without risk that's why every hero of faith in Hebrews chapter 11 did it by faith you may say but God spoke to them audibly it still took faith because after God, st God stopped speaking I'm pretty sure they looked at themselves and says this is crazy this can't be God you will experience exactly the same thing but I want to give a little advice to every person don't take risks copying someone else your risks have to come from your own relationship with God.
see my pastor's relationship with God is different than mine his risks are going to be different than mine your risks are going to be different than mine and that's why you can't copy my risk you have to look at what kind of relationship this risk is coming from and you have to copy the relationship which will push you to risk and the risk will open the platform for reward when our pastor came to United States in the first few months he said we want to buy a building everyone else got freaked out they said building for what we don't speak English we just came to America our church hasn't lifted we only have few families but see pastor didn't say that to buy a building out of crazy idea he built churches in Russia and he had experiences with starting ministries and so his risk it looked like a risk to everyone but for him it came out of relationship and it came out of trust he developed with God and that's why that risk was justified just because you see somebody giving a car it doesn't start for you there for you it starts with maybe being generous in something else for you it starts with getting out of blessed assurance Jesus is mine and going power evangelizing for you maybe it starts with just meeting another person who is not someone that you know in church begin to take risks and you will see the anointing will lift every time you will see the Holy Spirit move through you you will trace back to this one thing you took a risk you stepped into the unknown amen and last thing is that if you honor anointing in others, it will increase in you. If you honor anointing in others, it will increase in you. And I want to give you just four simple tips. I want each one of you to write this down. Number one, feed on the anointing. Feed on the anointing. Rahab was a prostitute, lived in a bad city. But Rahab collected stories. She didn't watch cat videos on YouTube and Facebook. She didn't just watch the jokes. She collected miracles. And it's interesting because she fed herself with miracles of what God of Israel was doing. Somehow God court orchestrated that the two spies landed in her house, not someone else's house. And somehow God orchestrated that her life was changed so much that she was rescued from Jericho and she went into the lineage of Jesus and King David. Because when you feed yourself on miracles, you attract miracles. If you feed on gossip, your life becomes a drama. If you always watch Bachelor, don't be surprised if you have that much drama circling around your life. And the only thing you're lacking is a GoPro and then you can start your own drama series in your own life. Why? Because what you feed yourself on, you attract in your life. Can somebody say amen? You can be Adam and Eve in a paradise. If you have a bad diet, you turn your paradise into a nightmare. Or you can be a Daniel in a captivity but if you have a good diet, you turn your captivity into a paradise. Your diet matters. Don't just scroll through YouTube. Don't just scroll through Facebook. Don't just listen to all kinds of junk and things that make you feel good. You need to listen to things that make you think good. Be good and be blessed, not just feel good. Because if you feed on supernatural, you attract supernatural. Can somebody say amen? feed on supernatural watch testimonies watch healings watch deliverances and you will see that will manifest and I was going last Saturday not yesterday but the week before with Ivan and with Brian we were going to pick up a, a moped close to Seattle I, I blessed myself with a moped I wanted to say God bless me but God blessed me to bless me with a moped and it's interesting as we were driving and these guys you know they're talking healing 24 7 it's amazing I look in the car and I see two books in the front on healing, three books on the back on how to heal and cast out demons. As we're talking, driving, chatting, hanging out, look at these guys reading stuff. No wonder we stop at minors just simply to eat. Before I even turn around, Ivan's already praying for some kid who has a brace. Why that stuff comes out? Because whatever you put in, comes out. If you put in gossip, don't be surprised if your relationships have the similar things that you constantly watch on TV feed on supernatural even if you're in a shady situation you will attract miracles Amen. number two don't attack anointing king saul attacked anointing in david and it never landed on his life david didn't attack anointing in saul and it remained on his life god will put you around people who are anointed but could be annoying. Have you ever met anointed, annoying people? Some of you are like, well, they came to our church. I know even some people who said about certain guests and they said, I didn't like that speaker. Didn't like it and I hate him, 
are two different things just because you didn't like his style you shouldn't attack the anointing because Pharisees got to the point where they attacked the anointing in Jesus so much that they blasphemy the Holy Spirit if you don't understand it nobody is asking for your opinion zip the lip shut your mouth nobody your opinion does not matter move on can somebody say amen don't attack in others that's why in our church we don't attack other men of God even if we don't understand them we don't attack them once I mentioned in the message that I read the good morning Holy Spirit book and I recommended people to read the book I had a person this person come vicious, spit coming out and I was like whoa he said how dare you recommend Benny Hinn and I said what's wrong with that he said do you know did you see the magazine where he held the hand of Paris Hilton with not Paris Hilton uh Paula White Paula White and I was like uh not really he's like this and this and that and I'm like is that in the bible that you quote it he's like no that's what the gossip I'm like you know that's a gas gossip magazine I'm like you trust everything the gossip magazine says you don't believe it was photoshop no it wasn't I know every story that is true and I was like well I don't know anything about this he says you can't read somebody whose marriages fall apart and who's not doing good and I was like do you read book of proverbs <laughs> Solomon didn't hang out with Paula White Solomon has 700 concubines and 300 wives and Solomon start worshiping idols and you're still drinking from that well every single day I'm like does that not bother you he's like well you mean you, you do have a point you know and I was like I don't know about Pastor Benny his lifestyle I do know about the anointing and the revelation and the person of the Holy Spirit and that's what I recommended the same way I don't know about Solomon and Samson but the anointing on their life is what we are attracted to and blessed come on somebody amen I'm pretty sure if Samson comes to our church to hold a crusade you know John Chi comes and we bring the sick Samson would come we bring the bad people <laughs> so he beats them I'm pretty sure nobody will come out and say Lord give me more of that no that anointing we might not like it but we still honor God who moves in the Samson's life in the Solomon's life can somebody say amen I want you to write down number three we, we're coming to an end serve the anointing and we know that Joshua he served Moses Elisha served Elijah disciples of Jesus served Jesus and then that anointing came upon their life serve the anointing find an anointing where you can serve where you can bless and the last one is support the anointing financially if you find someone that blesses you someone that speaks to you it's very important that you take time that you also financially support those people many times people say stuff like well you know I don't want to uh, give it to them they already are blessed it's interesting that when you go invest in a stock market do you look at the company that's bankrupting or you look at the company that's gonna go up <laughs> how many of you yeah when you're looking for land you don't look for the cheapest land you look for the best land when you're buying uh, real estate or when you're looking for a car like man I want to see the car that's been through 75 accidents has the worst record I want to salvage rebuild and everything combined on it I just want the worst of the worst why because I just want to take a broken and, and rebuild it no you look for the best car if you want to sow you always look for the good soil that's why we sow that's why we bless personally you know like even this year uh, Andre who's coming next week here and the Lord placed on my heart and my wife's heart to support him, his ministry financially each month with a large sum of money for us. It's almost like our savings every single month for the whole year to bless into that ministry. Why? Because I'm not just speaking these things. I live these things. The anointing will increase on my life as I honor the anointing in someone else's life. In Jesus' name. Can somebody say amen? Thank you for watching this content. I hope this was a blessing to you. If you're like me and you like to click on things, Click on this, subscribe to our channel, and the content will come to you every time we post it. And remember, the best is yet to come.